So welcome today to our web webinars. We're going to be talking to the osteopath Paul from Australia. He's trained in all kinds of holistic therapies and we're going to talk to him about what he finds most effective, especially for people with chronic diseases. So hello Paul and welcome. Good, uh, good evening for you guys, morning for us. <laughs> Great. So. Tell us, Paul, how did you start with holistic therapies? Oh, I originally didn't know what I wanted to do. I just mm -hmm. knew I wanted to use my hands <laughs> and do some healing work. So I found out about osteopathy from, um, I think my mother found out about it and, and I investigated it mm -hmm. and I got involved in it. I really loved it because, of, because it does have a holistic philosophy, as do many other, other healing arts. But mm -hmm. um, I love the philosophy. And the more I investigated it, the more it made sense. So from there, it's just after obviously the usual struggles of trying to put it all together mm -hmm. through my studies and whatnot. Um, once you start clicking to how it all works, it really does. It's a really beautiful way to help um, to help people heal. It's also a really good way to develop self awareness and um, deeper practice as well. But I mean, not everyone does that, but there's so much potential in it to take it as deep as you want to take it. Yeah. So, but I love it. Yeah, it's good. Fantastic. So you do traditional osteopathy and you do cranial osteopathy as well. That's right. There's, there's traditional osteopathy, which basically looks mainly at the whole person, particularly the musculoskeletal system. But the philosophy of it is you're looking at the whole person, mm -hmm. which includes everything about that person. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some practitioners will do, um, I call it just adding in more anatomy and they work in to, and tune into the deeper rhythms and movements and energies of the body. Mm -hmm. um, so they do a lot of craniosacral or biodynamic osteopathy. Um, and I take that another step further and in, uh, into a multi-dimensional approach. So you're looking at once you work out what's happening in the body physically or the location of the body physically of the problem mm -hmm. and how that then links up to the symptoms because sometimes where the symptom of, symptoms are is not where the original problem starts. And if you want to get good long-term permanent relief or continue to improve, you've got to deal with the whole pattern, not just the part with the symptoms. So the idea is you, you treat people with, with um, problems, not parts with symptoms is the same. Um, but I take that into a multi-dimensional viewpoint where you, once you work out physically where things are in trouble, you can tap into the energetic, the emotional, the mental, the other levels of, of um, the issue to get a very you know multi-dimensional view of what's going on. And that includes picking up on past issues and traumas which can set the stage for the present problem. Yeah. Great, because I've heard um, that if you've had any kind of back issue in your life, especially growing up or in your early 20s, um, it, c it can remain hidden until until much later yeah well if you think about it if someone has an accident just a normal any everyday accident or a, or a car accident or a fall or something like that mm -hmm. they'll often put a lot of maybe compressive force or a lot of traction force through the body um, and at that point you can get like a like a memory pattern or a reaction pattern in the nervous system for example to the trauma Mm -hmm. And if the body can't heal it, the body's natural tendency is to try and heal that injury. But if it can't heal it, what it'll do is it'll compensate for it. And then, uh, so, so you could say that the, the trauma has an original time element to it. And as you, if a person can't heal it, they'll adapt to it. And that, that sort of makes the posture go all crooked, for example. Um, and over time, that will cause pressure on other areas. So you could have a problem that starts, for example, in the back, or pelvis which eventually manifests in the neck because with work and activities and postural imbalance the neck tissues are getting strained and suddenly they're causing pain so that's why it's important to look at that whole picture to understand the cause effect sort of pathway it makes a lot of sense i still have a, a stiff shoulder from playing the violin as a child yeah. and now and again i find my left shoulder is is it's, it's like this That's and it's, right. it's like in my head I'm, I'm preparing to play the violin obviously I didn't play yeah. the violin very well but 
it's amazing how you can have that going on in your body for such a long time. And the most common patterns you'll find, even with neck pain or shoulder pain or even limb pain, a lot of people have issues between, say, the middle back and the pelvis mm -hmm. uh, because that's an area that needs a lot of support. Um, and if that's out of balance, it'll throw the weight bearing off and put pressure on other areas. So quite often, you know, a lot of the time, the neck or the shoulder or the knees aren't what you might call the primary problem area that you end up treating. And you'd only treat them if there was something going on in there that actually was in trouble. So you can't just treat something because it looks crooked or it feels tight because that's just two elements. It also, also needs to have a, um, a problem with its quality of movement, the quality of movement, the feeling of the tissues and the symmetry. That's what tells you what's worth treating and what's not worth treating for okay. example so for yeah. example yeah if you if you if you've got um stiffness in your back or lower back pain and yeah. you've noticed it comes after you've done a lot of work in the office perhaps you've been sitting a lot and yeah. um, are there things that people can do to help get their body back into shape if they can't go and see their local osteopath immediately oh, yeah. well, there's two main things that I often think about this. If you can, I mean, the idea when you go and see someone for treatment is the idea is the practitioner you see should be looking at your whole posture mm -hmm. to work out those patterns so that they make you aware of, the, of them and that they're there. Because if you don't know they're there, you might not know how to rebalance them or rehabilitate them, for example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so the practice, so practitioner's role is to assess and work out what else is going on in the body that could be interfering with your healing or recovery mm -hmm. and not just look at symptoms. But from the patient's point of view, once you're aware of what's going on, whether you do that through a therapist or you do it through self-awareness or meditation or healing or mm -hmm. just be through body awareness, and mindfulness, for example, mm -hmm. once you're aware of what's going on, you include that into your rehabilitation or your exercise plan. So you can do a lot of things. You can do self-awareness type exercises. Mm -hmm. which train the mind to tap into what's I, I teach people how to tap into what's healthy in their body because if you know what's healthy in your own body that's a good place to work from to become aware of things that aren't healthy is that through Pretty. meditation Paul yeah so it's sort of like if you want to rebuild a broken step even mm -hmm. mechanically in the physical world you build it from a healthy step so oh. if you want to build in more health you stand on the health and then you bring the health in to repair the damage, you could say. That so the sounds, body, yeah, like a really good way of looking at it as opposed to a, a something broken yeah. that needs to be you fixed. Spread, you spread the health instead of spread disease. That's yeah. the idea. And, if, and when you think about it, it's not about pain or symptoms. It's about what's interfering with healing and recovery. And so to do that, you've got to look deeper within to find out what's in trouble. But it's easy to know what's in trouble if you know what's healthy to begin with. So if you do basic awareness exercises with people's um, mind, for example, body, mm -hmm. you, can, you can ask people to tap into different parts of their body and find what feels healthy, what feels nice, and then contrast that with what's not. Okay. And then you, can do, then you can do a number of little healing exercises to help. It's like uh, I call it counselling for the tissues of the body. Okay. You, know, you find what's healthy, you find what's in, in trouble, and you try and hold them in relationship and get them to talk. And the problems, as you know, people with a lot of deep-seated chronic problems don't often, um, they often react to health. They, re they Instead of allowing health in, mm -hmm. they often react to it. It's like a stubborn person doesn't want to change, for example. Uh, but so you, they kind of push it away almost. Yeah, because people have, um, sometimes with complicated and chronic issues, yeah. people set up defense mechanisms to prevent them from healing. Yeah. So when they come across things that are good for them, they'll often put them away, push them away. They'll repel them or they'll uh, project them or they'll run away. And Now, you know what somebody <laughs> who's healthy is going to say, Paul? They're going to say, we don't believe you. Can you give us an example? <laughs> well, it's like any, any relationship thing. If, well, if, if you get two people, it's like counselling and you put one in a room a healthy person with a nice healthy outlook mm -hmm. and they're happy mm -hmm. in a room with someone who's a bit um, 
grumpy and miserable and you know stuck yeah if you put them in the room and you and you say you're not allowed out until you get along the one who's healthy will just stay happy regardless of what's thrown at him or her and the problem will often ignore the health i say oh, i don't because it makes the problem if you have more health mm -hmm. it makes the problem stand out more yes it amplifies yeah. it so the problem will feel a bit unsettled because it, it because it's it's been exposed to a greater amount of health around it, you could say. And so initially, it'll often react. And this is what you feel when you're treating people sometimes. You feel the parts of the body, once you get things starting to connect, you feel them starting to resist or react or ignore, or sometimes they even try to beat up the health, you know, get angry and annoyed. But after a while, if you just wait, mm -hmm. it gets to a point where it realises that the healthy person is not so bad, they're actually trying to help. So they stop stop reacting and they start listening and that's called a neutral point and once you get to a neutral oh. point that person's like saying all right you know i've yelled at you i've screamed at you uh, i've even tried to ignore you and you're still happy because i want some of that so it's a bit like the problem says now that i'm aware of that you have tried to help me i'm going to let you help me and then it starts responding so you feel this phase in the body in the treatment where the body's starting to respond to the treatment and to build in a healthy uh healthy habit pattern you could say which is the same as what happens when we do exercise or we're learning to heal our bodies right. we have to pull up the bad habit patterns um replace them with healthy habit patterns and then build those healthy postural habits back into the body and then you get this little balancing it's like learning how to play the piano when you feel like you've had enough and mm -hmm. you've, you've got it the, the system lets go and you feel like everything's working together again and the human body is meant to work as a whole integrated unit. So if everything works together well, then you know when a person walks out, they're just going to get healthier. They're going to build on the health. They've repaired the broken step and they've stepped onto a, you know, one step closer to a higher level of health, you could say. That's a beautiful metaphor. And for some reason, what you're saying makes me think about um, a classroom with a couple of naughty kids in it and That's it's right. almost like your body is made up of these little parts and yeah. when they're working together it's fantastic they can play a symphony but if a couple of them are unhappy for any reason then yeah. it colors the whole class doesn't it the whole group well, of people what can happen then is if, if the rest of the class get sucked into that drama yeah. then it upsets the whole class but if the other class can be sort of lovingly detached and go on about their business the problems jump out more and they start to feel like maybe they should change to fit in <laughs> so it's a, so that for the from the healthy perspective we need to stand true and healthy within it in touch with our health but from the problem perspective yeah we don't give in to the problem we actually work through the problems and clear them and it's like um, pouring clear water in a bucket of muddy water. If you pour in more health, healthy water into a bucket of muddy water, that mucky water comes out. So things come up and then they overflow and flush out, leaving the body healthier. So one of the issues with modern day healing is because we, as medical practitioners and in many fields, we focus so much on pain and getting rid of pain. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is, if you focus on pain, you judge your improvement as if you've got pain there or no pain but sometimes when you you're just dealing with pain it's like mowing the lawn without pulling any weeds out right it looks good looks good for a while then the weeds grow back mm. but if you deal with the, the problems and work through them then the issues come up and if the issues come up the patient's responsibility is to then be aware of those issues not react to them just notice them and then just work through them and clear them let them clear and then they'll feel better afterwards once the muck's out of the bucket so to speak right. so for chronic health mm -hmm. it's almost like people have to be aware that all the bad all the past traumas that we were talking about before that are stored and these are not all physical some are emotional some are mental mm -hmm. some are to do with um childhood traumas relationship issues mm -hmm. um frustration with the you know the current economic state of the world the materialistic you know um, viewpoints and all that sort of stuff it's all it all accumulates in the body until the body says I've had enough and when it's had enough the person gets symptoms something breaks down so if we just deal with the part that's broken down 
Mm. All you're doing is getting a person back to coping again. Yes. It's like treating a criminal with a bad back. If you fix his back, you're helping him get back to work, which is not actually helping society. <laughs> not at but all. If you teach him, but if he starts to learn that stealing or being a criminal actually is throwing his body off balance, mm. and that throwing your body off balance is actually causing his health issues, he starts to realise what he's doing in his life that's throwing him off balance and maybe realises that maybe that job, stealing or whatever, isn't good for him. And so he starts to correct his, uh, get his life in a, in a healthier line, which manifests more health in the body. That's so it's the all, idea. It's looking at the body as multidimensional or multi-layered, isn't it? Yeah. So that everything is affecting us, that we are, it's, it's our relationships, it's um, definitely what we eat and whether we exercise, but also it's our environment, isn't it? That's right. And it's also our reaction to that environment because when something bad happens, we can respond to that, like that analogy of the person who's healthy. Mm -hmm. We can respond to that situation, even if it's a terrible one, from a healthy, supportive um, viewpoint. Or we can respond, we can react to that difficulty and get caught up in it and make it worse. So that's that's what it comes down to. So we can we can learn things in our own being to help us stay centered mm -hmm. and how to help us stay more balanced. And then how we judge if we're improving in life. Like for example, if I'm all nice and balanced and centered and I get in an argument with somebody mm -hmm. and I come out the argument the other side, not winning the argument, but keeping my center keeping my balance that means i've spoken my truth i've done the best i can and that's just the way it was meant to be but if i go into an, uh, a discussion and i um, manipulate the other person for example to get what i want mm -hmm. and i lose my balance then i might have won the, the argument but i've lost my center so it's not about win or lose or pain or pleasure it's about what keeps you balanced and on track and what doesn't that's a, a completely different viewpoint on health it really is very, very different. And yeah. I've got a question then about the times when I feel really good and balanced. How can we keep those times? How can we protect ourselves better? Because I well, find those times are very short. Yes, well, it starts off being short. If you, if you were to have a look at how you were in your body in the moments you feel balanced, Mm -hmm. So it's like a sportsman who's really in the zone and they're really focused. Mm -hmm. If everything's focused, if you went through your body, you'd find that the different areas of the body would all be in sync, that all be fun functioning together. Mm -hmm. So it's like in the zone and you'd perform better. You'd have a smoother day, you'd have a smoother run. But if you had a bad day, you know how you wake up sometimes and you have a bad day and you're all over the place. If you went through and assessed yourself in that bad situation, you'll probably find that some areas of the body, for example, the mind or the, the brain or the heart or another area might all be out of balance. So if you can learn ways of tapping into that, mm -hmm. finding what's healthy and then letting it spread and rebalancing the parts that are out of sync, you'll bring yourself back into balance and then you'll actually be in the zone again. You'll be able to have a smoother day and you'll be able Sounds to maintain good. that for longer. That's, that's what I did when I started practicing. Mm -hmm. I would find if I had a busy day, um, for example, I remember one day where I saw several clients and they were quite chronic and difficult um, cases mm -hmm. and I was feeling a little bit lousy, you know, a bit run down because I was taking on board some of that. Mm -hmm. Then I had a client that had a really healthy um, energy, you could say, and I felt really good. And then the next client I felt really heavy and stuck again. And then I thought, well, this can't just be me because I'm changing every time a different person comes in. Mm. And so what I, I did is instead of worrying about the client, I went into myself and I found my own inner health. And when I found it was in my heart area, and when I tuned into that area, it felt soft and light and free and contained. But then I was aware of the, the patient's issues and problems sort of closing in on me, you could say. Mm -hmm. And so I just imagined that spreading and lifting, lifting off. And then I started, felt myself again and I felt good. And then I could actually do better work on my client because instead of me taking on board their issues, I was able to spread my health into them and help support their body come back to balance. And so they walked out healthier. So effectively at the end of the treatment, both the patient and myself both felt better. 
so that's that was for me from that point on I started becoming a lot more aware of how to stay balanced while you're treating so you don't take on board people's issues and then you can be of more support but that that just takes time and practice and a little bit of understanding so with we're talking a lot about awareness, but that's where the healing starts. You have to have a bit of awareness about the relationship between what's healthy in our own bodies and what isn't healthy, so we can support health and not react, not get caught up in the problem. Because if we're attached to the problem, we'll react to health. Well, that sounds like really good advice for, for anyone who's working or living with people who are not so well. It's um, a way that we can give the best possible support wherever we are, isn't yeah. it? But I think um, I'm really intrigued now about learning more about these different ways we can rebalance ourselves and, and maybe not snap out in the kind of Tony Robbins uh, way of, of, sure. of changing emotional states, but kind of recenter. Well, it's, once you're recentered, what that basically means is that you're in sync with health. Things are flowing better. Mm. And so you're in a better position to respond to stresses. You're in a better position to deal with the day. Mm. Your body will be more balanced, so it'll feel healthier and feel like it's working better and if everything it's sort of you almost could call that the baseline to rebuild healthy life because if you're centered everything's balanced your mind your emotions your body your spirit all in one one integrated unit and then you can start so the, the first stage of rehab is always to control and awareness and then when you're starting to heal yourself once you've got control and awareness you can start doing other things like postural exercises or stretching exercises or strengthening exercises or fitness training and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. but it makes a lot of sense if you are if you're trying to strengthen your body with gym work but you've got a twist let's say you're all twisted and crooked and you're doing sit-ups you're actually strengthening the problem in an imbalanced way rather than centering yourself first and then strengthening it in the right way so, so you yes, need to you make sure you get checked out for your yeah. posture and everything yeah. that's going on physically before you start any kind of exercise regime, really. Well, that helps. They work in together. So if, if you, or whether you do it yourself or you get support to help you learn how to do it, um, the idea is if you, if you start from a stable base, then you can do things more efficiently. You can stretch better. Mm. You can strengthen better. You can and make sure you do it with the correct a technique you know the correct correct posture is basically correct alignment but we often think of correct posture as purely just physical posture but correct alignment means correct mental attitude to people in life correct emotional posture is correct mm -hmm. relationship you like with others for example we are coming from a place of peaceful calm and lovingness rather than uh, reactivity you know that's a win-win thing not a win-lose thing mm -hmm. and correct physical posture as well so simple, correct physical posture exercises, for example, is if someone's sitting at work in an office and they're slouching, mm. if you sit up tall, just sit up tall and then relax 10%, that puts your body in a more or less nice balanced posture, a very simple postural tip. And then you set up your workstation so you can stay in that posture. But you want to keep in mind that if you've been sitting crooked for 20 years and you start to sit up straight, those muscles aren't going to be used to it. So mm. they're going to ache if you're in the wrong posture. This is what happened to me at one point. And when I started sitting up correctly, they ached anyway. They still ached. And why did they ache? Because now they're learning to do their job, the muscles, before they weren't doing it. And what do things do when they don't, they're not used to doing it? They'll complain. Exactly. <laughs> and I, I really like the way that you're talking about the body and the tissues of the body as having intelligence. Because we're not ta we're not taught that, are we? We're taught that the intelligence lives here and that's just not true. It lives well, in every part of us, doesn't it? That's right. And people often think that their mind is confined to their brain, but the brain is just an instrument of the mind. But you can think the idea is to think with your whole being. Mm. So if you're at a computer all day and people get so caught up in their heads and in the, the thinking process, they lose touch with the feeling of their body. Yeah. So they get too much in their heads and not enough in their anchored in their body. So that could contribute to things like headaches, for example, or too much stress or mental anxiety, which locks up your whole midline. 
But if you can connect with your body, and I, I tell people to think with their whole being, think with their whole body. So that way you're feeling things as well as th thinking about it and feeling it at the same time. And it makes you more equally balanced between the areas of your body, not just focused on one area. And then you start noticing differences in the body and you start noticing what takes over and what's missing and all that sort of stuff. And, so and I think this is a really um, healthy way, a, a different way for people who have been ill perhaps for a long time to think about themselves instead of thinking of themselves as sick or ill. Yeah. Um, if they start thinking of themselves, I suppose, almost like a project. So it's discovering which yeah. part of them are healthy. And it's a different, different viewpoint, for sure. Yeah. Someone with um, chronic health issues, the difference between a chronic health issue and a simple health issue is if you imagine like a fishing line tied in a knot, mm -hmm. right? a simple problem is just one knot in the fishing line chronic problem is many knots in the fishing line are right, all entangled so it's more i call them mul multiple relationship imbalances mm. between mind emotion body different parts of the body and so on and so if you take a very symptomatic approach with that it's like grabbing the, the fishing line and just yanking and tearing at it and hoping that it'll straighten itself out or it's like surgery where you cut the line all together but then the trouble is you're missing mm. bits right but where do you start unraveling from? You find the healthy end of the string. So you find where it's healthy, you find where it goes into the first problem, you unravel one problem, mm -hmm. it starts to improve and then you get stuck at the next problem and the next problem and the next problem. So if you look at chronic health like that, it's just a matter of how many knots there are and just over time they'll start unraveling and you'll start seeing people improve. So rather than focus on disease, you're focusing on health. Um, I met a psychology psychologist once who did one of my workshops and she changed her practice from looking for a person's problem mm -hmm. to looking for a person's health. And when she started looking for the health in the body, her clients improved quicker and better because instead of saying, this is you, you've got this problem, she said, this is not you, that's not really who you are. Who you are is this healthy being that's trapped inside all these issues. And he started feeding the health and as you build the health in, it goes from 10% to 20% to 30% to 40% to 51%. Mm. And when you get to 51% health, it's like you're, you're going, it's been an uphill battle. Yeah. And then you get to that 50%, 51% mark, and you're going more forwards with health than against it. So it's easier to move forward when you're over that hurdle. But when you see chronic health problems, it's like they, you can chip away at it and it's like you're getting healthier, but they don't. People don't feel anything straight away because they're still more resisting the growth than they are allowing it. So it's sort of like I call it going over the hill of health, where you're feeding the flower of health, starving the weed of disease, and you're gradually building in more health. And then eventually, as people learn how to do that for themselves, mm -hmm. and then get they start to let that overflow into their lives and start improving all the other elements of their lives, then they start to lift themselves out of the the, issue, the health issues, but quite often with chronic health, there's a lot of up and down at the start because the body is literally arguing with itself between the healthy and the unhealthy parts. Yeah, and it's sort of like trying to shift the gear, so to speak, into a healthier one, as opposed to this programming that drags us back. And the idea is you want to notice those issues, but don't feed them or react to them. So you, that way you don't that, get stuck in. That, yeah, that is the tricky part, I think, Paul, um, is not reacting and actually staying yeah. positive, staying um, resilient, yeah. keep, to keep walking up the mountain, like you say, until you get over the top, isn't it? Yeah. That is the so tricky part. So healing, healing has two important parts. There's, there's um, um, lost my train of thought for a second there. So there's um, identifying then fixing isn't that yeah you've got it you've got to notice where the problem is without reacting to it but you've got to notice where the health is as well yeah because the health tells you where to start from and the problem tells you what you're ready to work on and the body will present we talked about intelligence of the body before mm. the body will not present something to us that it's not ready to heal so if you bring that relationship, it's like it's all about relationships. If you bring healthy, well, healthy areas into contact with unhealthy areas, 
until they sort out their differences, then you know you've anchored a healthier change and a person's gone from say 10% to 15% health. So when they walk out your door, you know that there's one step, one step forwards. And whatever they feel after that's the muck coming out of the bucket. You know they're getting healthier. So when they come in the next week and they say, oh, I had a horrible week, everything's, well, I had a lot of emotional changes and all sorts of stuff. And then you reassess, more often than not, if you've done a good job, there actually is more signs of health in the body and the body's just peeling the layers away. So, but that requires, um, you have to be aware of that. Um, so healing is really the, there's the treatment element to it. And there's the, the self-awareness and the ability to, um, to work through what comes up as well. And if you do both of those, you can't go wrong. You have to go forward. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm really glad we spoke to you, Paul, because you're such an optimist and you have such a lovely way of talking about it. I really like the idea of spreading that health that you find in the body until the yeah. bad health can't exist anymore. That's right. And then it's just a matter of not, you either spread health or you spread disease. And it's our choice which one we want to do. Fabulous. And and once you're aware of the two of them, you, it's only a madman would choose the opposite, choose not to go with hell. Well, that's, <laughs> that's got to be the subject of another webinar, hasn't it? Why yeah. do we make that choice? Why do we sometimes make that choice? But thank yeah, you yeah. so much, Paul. And we can tune in to you with your, with your self-healing modules, can't we? Yeah, I've, I've, this year I decide, I've had clients that have been asking me for years to write down some of my self-healing exercises meditations so I, I basically have created um, a series of modules which educate people about our multi-dimensional anatomy mm -hmm. it's a little bit out there some of it but it's also very grounded and it just gives people food for thought but more importantly the exercises in there help people to, to give them ways of tapping into their health and noticing their issues and then healing them so I've got all that information out I've done three out of four modules one on the different levels, one on the centers, one on time and forms, talking about the time elements and how that can influence the body. And the last one I'm going to do on relationships. <laughs> so because the idea, the reason I leave that to last is because if you are aware of the relationships in your own body and you're used to finding health, that means that when you relate to somebody else, if you're coming from health, you're likely, you'll catch your own issues out. In other words, you won't project your own issues. You can deal with your own stuff. And if you're dealing with your own stuff, then your relationship with others will naturally improve. That sounds That's like an it. interesting philosophy. So where can so we you, find them? They're all on your website, aren't they? So I've got all that information on my website, which is um, www.turnerpublications.com. I call it that because I've got a lot of educational material. It's primarily for practitioners, but I've also got stuff to help clients and patients as well. Because I think if you're going to help to heal chronic health issues, you've got to not only educate patients, but practitioners about that holistic model. And I've done some research. So I've got some YouTube clips on um, the holistic multidimensional model, which people might be interested in looking at. Um, that basically talks about the relationship between the medical and the holistic and how they can work together and not apart. And what each one emphasizes. So if people understand that, Practitioners will look for the underlying patterns more and patients will start being more responsible to deal with the underlying issues that are interfering with their health. That's the idea. That's <laughs> absolutely fantastic, Paul. I'm sorry, we are nearly out of time, but That's I it. want to <laughs> thank you again for taking the time. And if I was in Australia, I'd definitely be beating a path to your door for my <laughs> back any day. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure and um, I thank you for the opportunity to, to share some information. That's wonderful. <laughs> you take care and I'm sure we'll talk again soon. No worries. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for <laughs> now. See you. <laughs>